Good evening and welcome to the March 12, 2018 <coughs> meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Could we please have the roll call? Chairman Sullivan? Here. Councillor Garvin? Here. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Councillor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councillor Lennon? Here. Councillor Randall? Here. And Councillor Straw? Here. May we please pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any town council reports and correspondence? No, I don't see any. Uh, I'd like to just say thank you again to our public works department, which is exemplary as always, cleaning our roads, et cetera, last week. And I'm, <laughs> I have a really strong feeling they're gonna be busy tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you in advance. Uh, okay, could we please have the finance committee report? Uh, our finance chair is Councillor Jamie Garvin. Thank you, uh, Councilor Sullivan. The um, dashboard is included in the packet. I'm not intending to hit on anything um, terribly specific in that today, unless there was anything you wanted to call out, Matt. Uh, just a couple of items uh, of note, uh, specifically our, our revenues are tracking on very well. Obviously, building permits still show a robust, uh, robust economy in the building department, and uh, we're still going forward, and we still have a quarter left to go, so we're looking at a good, a good revenue projection for that for the year. Uh, on the other side of the ledger, on the uh, expenditure side, legal services, I think uh, you'll notice that we're, we're going to be <clears throat> close to the margin, if not exceeding for the year due to uh, some unforeseen uh, legal expenses that we're going to have. But those are the two uh, more, more significant highlights of the, on the dashboard. Chairman Garvin. Any questions on the dashboard? Um, the one thing I just want to call everybody's attention to, I sent out an email to the council earlier um, this afternoon. Um, included in that was a link to the school board workshop of last Thursday, the 8th, was it the 8th or Wednesday, the 8th? Thursday, Thursday? Yep. the 8th. Um, as well as I scanned um, a, a um, handout that Senator Rebecca Millette had uh, distributed. Um, I gave it to those who are interested in, uh, in addition to it being attached to the email. Um, I really, really encourage you all to go back and watch the video of the meeting if, uh, if you have the time. Um, in particular, Senator Millett at the beginning of the meeting um, went through with great clarity, uh, in my opinion, the whole process by which the town receives funding for our public schools from the state. Um, and as we're heading into budget season, uh, I think it would be really beneficial for everybody, not only on the council, but uh, frankly in the public to um, become more familiar with that, to have a better understanding of, of that whole process. So I'd be happy to um, you know, answer any questions that anybody has about it separately um, or now. If uh, you could just uh, address the handwritten calculations on it. I, I apologize if it's described in the video, but uh, yeah, so what, what, what are those? Those were actually Rebecca's notes, Senator okay. Millett's okay. notes. Um, so um, I, I think it, she, didn't, she didn't go through that in particular. The cover two pages were sort of just a bulleted summary of the various legislative action from last session that yielded the funding formula that it did. Um, so um, she didn't specifically allude to what those couple of, and there's a few things in the margins on the, on the um, EPS formula too, so. Um, but anyway, the, really the, the, the point I'd underscore is that her narrative um, presentation at the meeting um, was, I thought, quite valuable um, and something that, you know, personally I didn't have the degree of familiarity with that I do now, so. Um, that's all I have for okay. comments. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> and now we come to the point in the agenda when we have an opportunity for citizens to address the council uh, regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. I know that we have a citizen and group, one group and citizen here anyway. So who is ready to address us? Yes, Mr. Dana. Please come up and t t tell us your name and where you live. 
and and your. Um, why I'm here? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, Benson Dana, and uh, I live at 17 Orchard Road in town. And uh, I'm here because the uh, I'm this year's president of the Cape Elizabeth Lions Club, and the Cape Elizabeth Cape Elizabeth Lions Club is very happy to present this AED device, automatic emergency defibrillator, uh, to the town tonight. We understand that the device will be located in the transfer station, which sees a lot of public activity and is in close proximity to the Gulf Crest Athletic Fields. Uh, two of our members uh, at, uh, work at the transfer station, and one is a long-term volunteer. Uh, this presentation is just one of the reasons we get up early to make the pancakes and cook the spaghetti sauce all day. Uh, we'd like to sincerely thank all the citizens who support us and our events year in and year out. It makes a difference. Uh, Lions International is the largest service organization in the world. There are over 46,000 Lions clubs and more than 1.4 million members in over 200 countries throughout the world. The motto of the Lions International is simply, we serve. Um, thank you, and uh, please follow us on Facebook. And uh, I'll present this to... Uh... Thank you, Mr. Dana, and thank you to the Cape Elizabeth Lions Club. I frankly can't think of a, a more important um, piece of equipment that a volunteer organization could donate to the town, and uh, I'm sure other counselors join me. I don't know if anyone else would like to say anything, but to thank you for all the wonderful work you do and for your thoughtfulness and uh, donating to us a gift that can save lives in Cape Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Would any other, would any counselors like to say anything? I do follow you on Facebook and I pass your pancake breakfasts around all the time. So thank you so very much. Thank you. All right. Would any other citizens like to speak to an item, anything that is not on tonight's agenda? All right. Seeing no one, we'll move on. And now the town manager's monthly, monthly report, please. Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. Uh, tonight, I am uh, proud to be delivering the annual budget for fiscal 2019 to the council. I'm looking forward to the future discussions with the council and the public regarding this budget. Next Tuesday and Wednesday evenings, the council will be reviewing the budget with myself and the department heads for all the different departments over those two nights. Uh, some of the highlights in, the up, in this upcoming budget, I'd like to mention a few of those points. Uh, as the budget's currently constructed, it would subtract two cents from the tax rates or minus 0.4% from the municipal portion. The budget includes all ongoing municipal departments and community services. The total combined municipal and community services budget last year was $12,144,724. This budget proposes a $12,254,608 budget for an increase of $109,884 in spending, or 0.9%. This is offset with a revenue increase from sources other than property tax of $98,337, or 2%. The amount to be collected from property tax is proposed to be $7,222,601, which is two-tenths of 1% more than last year. The budget includes a 2% average wage increase for personnel. It also includes providing for an expansion to two per diem fire personnel, improving the town's coverage. There's an increase in the personnel costs at the recycling facility due to the adjustment or adjusting to the recent updates. There's also an increase in the legal budget due to upcoming anticipated lawsuits. Finally, in both the police and public works budgets, there are an estimated payroll amount for both or well, there is an estimated payroll amount for both, as both collective bargaining units are up for negotiations for new contracts this year. Personnel-related costs in total are about 6.26 million, or about 49% of the total budget. The budget does contain significant capital items to be purchased in line with the planned capital improvement plan. There's a planned replacement of the fire department's ladder truck at an estimated $1.25 million, and replacement of our current 15-year-old ambulance unit 
with the new unit at $250,000. The purchase of the ladder truck and the ambulance will be described by the fire chief in his budget presentation next week. Public works capital expenditures include funding for the planned phase two of the Hillway Scott Dyer Road reconstruction, which is planned to go out to bid in the spring of 2019. There's also the planned replacement of a dump slash plow truck and a larger pickup truck in that budget. There's also an anticipated expenditure of $50,000 uh, earmarked for purchase of paid display parking units for Fort Williams. It's proposed to purchase the large capital equipment items via a lease purchase agreement with an anticipated financing arrangement of over five years. The ladder truck, ambulance, and dump truck are all longer life items that will outlast the financing arrangements, provide expense line predictability, and lessen the impact on taxpayers. Offsetting these increases in capital expense is the use of unassigned fund balance in the amount of $500,000 towards capital improvements and, continued, and continues the use of $375,000 for against annual operating expenses. This will lower the current amount of unassigned funds, but keep, us, keep the overall level of unassigned funds properly in line with the current policy that the town has. I look forward to the upcoming budget sessions and I'm very glad to have the process underway. In light of recent tragic events, shifting gears here, I held a discussion this morning with the Personnel Advisory Commission or committee and with the department heads on our emergency response, training and preparedness. Last summer we had an active shooter training with Chief Williams during the Staff Appreciation Day, which was very well received. However, staffing at the town office, community services, library, public works, public safety, the pool, and the fitness center, and other facilities, with having staff spread across in multiple facilities, we need to have a way to get people safely out of buildings in the event of an emergency and to be able to account for our personnel. This morning we had a very productive discussion with both groups and as a result we'll be forming a safety committee comprised of representatives from all departments. The desire is to formulate action plans in the case, on, God forbid, of an emergency and raise our organizational awareness of safety. I'd like to take the opportunity also to congratulate our recycling committee. Uh, last week they were provided an Eco Excellence Award from Eco Maine, so there's some great news. Uh, and it was specifically related to their uh, plastic bag and polystyrene uh, ban that they worked on last year and, and, and helped implement. And uh, hats goes off to them and uh, it was a great, great event where they were recognized and it was a full house, which was really exciting. And uh, we had majority of our recycling committee there, so they got to get their, their just desserts. A couple other items you may want to know for tomorrow. The Cape Elizabeth schools will be closed all day. And the school board meetings tomorrow evening will be rescheduled to the 15th. Uh, there's a parking ban tomorrow starting at 5 a.m. for you early risers. And it'll last until noon on Wednesday, March 14th. Uh, as far as the town operations go, uh, I'll be speaking with Bob Malley uh, bright and early and uh, we'll be deciding what we'll be doing from the town operations side. I know a number of towns have closed for the day and other, other businesses have closed, but we'd like to make sure uh, we don't do it too, too, too early if we have to. But uh, we will post any kinds of updates like that on our website, so if you need to find if any of our operations are open or closed, please check that first if you have power. Uh, especially for the pool, uh, we try to get that out early. The uh, staff shows up there at 5.15. They open at 5.30, so we try to make that decision early when it comes to that, so please check the website before you head out of your house if you're looking to use that. Speaking of snow, I'd like to take the opportunity, as Chairman Sullivan did, to once again thank our public works crews for their great work on our roads and in advance of what looks like to be another fine spring storm. My final thought that I can bring you to hopefully bring some joy on this day is that spring is eight days away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. That's the manager's report for the night. <laughs> Thank you. Are, are there any questions for the town manager uh, on his report? No. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Our next item is review of the draft minutes of January 8 and February 12. Do I have a motion to accept uh, the minutes of January 8, 2018? Council so Straw. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan. Any? 
edits, questions, whatever? No? All those in favor of approving the draft minutes of January 8, 2018? It's unanimous. February 12, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve the February 12, 2018 minutes? Draft minutes. So moved. Councilor Penny Jordan has, has moved. Is there a second? Councilor second. Straw, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Next item, number 40, dogs to be restrained on municipal property. Before we begin, is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this item? Seeing no one, we'll continue. I'd like to ask the town manager to, to um, open up this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Sullivan. If I may, I'd like to uh, give you a great uh, summarization of this. Uh, back in December, as you may recall, when we were discussing the off-leash capacity at Fort Williams, uh, we had the opportunity to review much of the dog ordinance that we had uh, on the books, finding that it hadn't been revised or renewed since, I think it was 1991. Since that time period, the town has acquired Gullcrest, it has acquired the Winnick Woods parcel, and there are other, uh, other areas that are kind of gray areas within the off-leash uh, part of it, such as uh, like the, the, the beach up by, up by Chris's house, the Cliff House Beach, and a couple of other small beaches. So, Looking at some of those areas that there was confusion for staff and the public, I thought it might be time to get a review of, uh, of that section of the ordinance to update it to take into account current assets that the town has. Uh, one, to help staff find out how, they, how things need to be enforced and let the public know where they can legally do what they, what they would please to do. Uh, thinking about where, this, to, where the recommendation to make for the council to refer this section of the ordinance to, uh, brought me to think about our open space management plan that the uh, mm -hmm. Conservation Committee did back in 2011-2012. Uh, for, for at least going back to that point, they've had a good opportunity to have open dialogue with a lot of the dog owners and dog walkers within the community, and they've had a good, they have a good relationship with them and uh, fairly good terms of communication. So thinking about that and speaking with town planner Maureen O'Mara, uh, found that it may be a good opportunity for council to refer that to the conservation committee so they can take a look at this, make, res uh, make recommendations for changes and update it, and then bring that back to the council and then uh, have, have, uh, you know, have the council go forward with what, what their desires are. I, I did speak with ordinance committee chairman Penny Jordan to make sure I wasn't uh, getting over my skis and uh, she, was, she felt that was a good recommendation as well, but I didn't want to try to take anything away from ordinance committee when, uh, when they if they weren't prepared for that. So that's why I brought this here tonight to hope that they could get this on their, on their, on their agenda and move forward. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion uh, to uh, request that the town manager provide, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, is there a motion to uh, <clears throat> approve the town manager's recommendation that chapter seven dogs be referred to the Conservation Committee for review and recommendations for revisions to Section 7-17. Uh, Councillor Lennon? Move that Chapter 7 dogs be referred to the Conservation Committee for review and recommendation for possible revisions to Section 7-1-7. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Councillor Penny Jordan, any discussion? Councillor Garvin. I have a question on um, procedure. So with it going to the Conservation committee first and then presumably coming back to us it would still then have to go back to the ordinance committee if the council so chooses but i believe so likely yeah likely do we ever jointly refer things to two committees at the same time for concurrent review or even potentially joint review i, I, I haven't seen that i don't i'm in my recollection no that hasn't taken that hasn't happened i don't ever recall that happening and it probably, um, what makes sense to me about this, having the conservation committee review this and then comes back to the council and goes to ordinance, I think it, that is a very practical uh, scenario. Yes. I, I only bring it up in the interest of timing and thinking about coming into the more sort of active mm -hmm. dogs outdoor season. And so I know that, so if, if there were opportunity for there to be concurrent review even as part of a joint meeting that, that was really what my question was about so okay but yeah. I, I don't know if that's 
Well, I, I think I personally don't see that as an as I think that's a very reasonable uh, question. I don't think that there's an emergency situation, so I don't I don't see that it's that we need to, to do that right now, but I don't know what other counselors think. Uh, Councilor Lennon? I mean, maybe when we, when we send it to the Conservation Commission, we can ask that it be on their next meeting or, you know, ask yeah. them to do it with some expediency. Sure. No, I, I, I think that's a great idea. I, I just don't, I yeah, think that this can back. happen. I, I think, I guess I wasn't very articulate. I think that going to the Conservation Commission, Committee and then going to ordinance Will, will happen before the weather's warm enough that people would be having questions if there's not a resolution. I think it will probably um, move along well. But, you know, I don't know. Councilor Penny, Jordan, I'm sorry. Um, when, um, when Matt talked to me about it, uh, the fact that the Conservation co Committee was, um, had worked on that problem, I said, I don't want to, um, uh, go and redo work, but I think um, Councillor Garvin has a good suggestion that we work on it concurrently because they they've done the research and they've already formulated some probably ideas and recommendations. So why not expedite the process? Because I kind of understand what you're saying that that we're we're coming into the season. Excuse me. When you say they've done the research, well, to they, whom are you they've referring? been they've been talking about the the commission has talked about activities on open space and fields oh, and things yeah. like that. Yeah, general. Yeah. I mean, they they in general. In general, yes, yes, in yes. general. Okay. Yeah, yes. Thanks. Any other thoughts, Councilor Garvin? My my only thought around the calendar is that you know if we ping pong this back and forth between the two committees and you know so goes to conservation now, optimistically it comes back to us in April, it's gonna then go to ordinance, mm -hmm. not come back to us till May, there'll be a need for a public hearing. I mean, in, in all reality, we're looking mm -hmm. at either okay. June or July mm -hmm. on the calendar for making any decision on this. So, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it, you're, it, it is not an urgent problem, and when we were addressing the Fort Williams situation, that was a more urgent thing, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's fine. I'm, I was just trying to look at any way to possibly be more efficient on this. It's okay. not the big deal. I'm not going to make a big deal about it, but um, it seems like we might be able to work a little bit more expeditiously. On that. No, those are great comments. Um, through the town manager. If, if I may, through yep. the chair, a uh, couple of thoughts. Yeah, I, I would agree with uh, Councilor Garvin that it isn't. Uh, it's not an emergency situation that we have here as far as revising the ordinance. It's it's been working fine all along. It's just a question of updating it to to do that. So. There isn't a, you know, we don't, there's not a question of trying to get there before the 4th of July to get that completed. It's, we should be okay. The other thing is, uh, if you go back through, and remember when uh, the land trust decided to not allow dogs on their property anymore? Uh, that's when a lot of the conversation between the conservation committee and a lot of the dog walking community within Cape Elizabeth was working with them because they were scared, uh, quite frankly, to think that, oh, now the town's going to be the next domino to fall and there won't be any allowed open space where the dogs can be off leash. So they came to them and they've had an ongoing conversation for quite a while and uh, come, come up to speed on dog walking 101 uh, quite a bit since December. So, uh, so I think they've really got a good uh, relationship there that, and, and experience within the ordinance and, and, and thinking about town owned properties that may make it go pre, you know, when they do get a hold of it to make it move fairly fast and I, I, I would think once they brought recommendations forward, uh, concerned that Maureen's the staff person for that committee as well, they may have a, an ordinance committee uh, blue ribbon special, so to speak. They so, should be ready to go. Okay, so you're recommending we, we just proceed to the conservation committee right now and then, then it will go to ordinance quite rapidly? I think, I think it might save, okay. save a lot of time. Uh, no, I agree you suggest if we do it. Currently, are you I, I think just with the regular conservation committee. Just the regular committee. process, okay. Okay. All right, so is there a motion to, uh, to, sorry, uh, we have I'm sorry, yeah. Any other discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? All right. Thank you, and I, I would like to thank uh, Councilor Jordan of Garvin because I was thinking, it's so hard with all the snow in the ground and we're coming, I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, we're not gonna have <laughs> green grass for quite a while, but we might. <laughs> okay, 
All right, item number 40, 41, recommendation to move food, a food vendor permit site at Fort Williams Park. Uh, <clears throat> it is recommended the town council approve the staff's recommendation to the vendor permit site changes to site A as presented. Again, I'm gonna ask um, the town manager to address this with us. Thank you, Chairman and Sullivan. Perhaps our public works director, I don't know. Uh, uh, Bob, Bob was involved with me on this. Uh, he's my co-conspirator. Uh, <laughs> we have four sites down at the park that are currently uh, allowed for food vendors. Uh, one now is site, site A is as you come towards the headlight is on the right hand side of the circle. And last, uh, last year or last fall it was revised from being 90 square feet to being 50 square feet. And we went and put everything out to bid this past uh, or after the turn of the year to see what we had for food vendors who would be interested in, in those sites. We found the 50 foot site was too small, quite frankly, for uh, a, a lot of wagons or food wagons, that, vendor wagons that would come down there to work. Uh, so we had bids for, for all of them, but all the successful bidders said that that 50 was just not gonna work for them. So we went down and took a look at the site and then looked over by, uh, on the left-hand side of the circle where there's currently the, uh, the, greeters, the greeters house and gorgeous gelato was just to the right and back of that. And Bob and I went down and walked out and paced off some areas to see could we feasibly site two vendors in that, kind of in that area beside the, the cliff walk beginning mm -hmm. and against the, the landscape, you know, the larger outcropping of rock that goes up and back of it and found that they'd fit in there quite well, uh, honestly. And I've also taken the time to speak with both vendors who were the top bidders for both sites. They both find that that would work for them. Uh, I think we can accommodate them both. Uh, there are some recommendations that will be coming uh, forward from the uh, subcommittee on, on buses and trolleys at the park uh, with recommendations on traffic down there that should alleviate some of the traffic concerns within the circle. Uh, so the recommendations that we're making is to take the original site A, move it over beside or kind of a, at a 90 degree angle to site B uh, and eliminate the original site A completely from where it was and then we would have uh, all the bidders would be happy. We would have a diversity of food because right now we're, we're looking at having two lobster vendors, lobster roll vendors, uh, and a gelato vendor, uh, as well as possibly uh, hot dogs and hamburgers over at Ship Cove. So we have a diversity of food options too. And, uh, but everybody seems to be happy with that and we should have all, all the food uh, vendor sites occupied. But I do think that works better as far as visually as well, looking at coming down towards the, towards the lighthouse uh, and as you can see from my uh, photo that I, st that I connected to uh, this recommendation, fairly uh, roughly drawn, but it shows you where the two sites would be moved to. So that's, uh, that's been our recommendation. And, and the Fort Williams Park Committee has also looked at this and, and they came back and they were okay with the recommendation as well. Okay, they're, they're in support of this. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, uh, is there a motion to uh, uh, approve the staff, staff recommendation to the vendor permit site changes to site A as presented. Councilor Straw? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Councilor Lennon. A discussion and questions for the, the town manager? Councilor Straw? Uh, out of curiosity, if I recall correctly, I was on the Fort Williams Park Commission when we discussed uh, much of this in the past. Uh, site A, we had a lower minimum bid if I recall, because it was a smaller size. So in effect is the, it sounds like we're increasing the size, but I assume the minimum bid, I don't know if the bid came in at the minimum, I don't know if that can be disclosed at this point, but I'm wondering, did someone just bid the minimum and now we're giving them a much larger spot? If, if I may, yes, Jim and Sol, please, yeah. uh, it was a good bid. Okay, All right, we'll keep it at that. Right. It, was, it was equal, it was actually, the, the bidder was equal to or greater than uh, all the other bids. All right. So yeah, we were, yeah, the, the, in this case, uh, yeah, the size didn't drive the, the size of the bid, so. But we, working with them to qualify it, it, it helped make, make that happen, so it, it falls in line with the, with the cost on the others. Any other questions? Councilor Randall? Did the Fort Williams Park Committee have any concerns about this, or did they give it a solid stamp of approval? What did you say, Bob? Solid? No, Bob, Bob met with them and spoke with them about it last week, or two weeks ago. I think the concern was having a larger unit in Site A. Uh, 
uh, just as Matt said, just you know the visual impact, the aesthetics. And the original premise of going with 50 square feet was to hopefully attract a smaller car, maybe like a small pretzel wagon or a hot dog car. But there just didn't seem to be the interest uh, from, from bidders for that site. So, uh, and we worked uh, very aggressively or actively with the bidder uh, that was the high bidder on site A, and he really tried to even build a car to meet those square footage requirements and went through a number of renditions of it and just found it very difficult to build a car to meet those square footage limitations. Any other questions for Bob Malley while he's at the podium? So I have gone one. So this, with this, with this pr uh, proposed change, there will be no vendors to, to, to on the right side of the circle. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I, I have to say I like that. Um, anyway, but um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot to ask if there's anyone from the public that would like to comment on this issue. All right, seeing no one, thank you. Thank you, Council Garvin. Uh, any other question, questions or comments? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, and thank you, Bob. Okay. Item number 42, request for zone change on the tower overlay district. Um, again, I'm, we're keeping Matt very busy with <laughs> introducing items, but this is, I think, a, a fairly complicated one, so I'd like to ask the town manager to, to introduce it. Thank you, uh, oh, and before I do that. What, at what point do you want me to recuse myself before or after he speaks? Um, you may recuse yourself right now. Okay. It's not that I don't think I can be objective. I just think it's best that I not participate in this topic at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Penny Jordan. And before, I, I'm forgetting again, is there anyone that would like, anyone from the public that would like to speak to this issue? All right, seeing no one. All right, thank you. So, so Matt, if you would continue. Uh, have to, Chairman Sullivan, thank you. Uh, tower specialist is requesting a zone change for their existing tower overlay district, which currently encompasses the entirety of 14 Strout Road, which is map R05, lot 24, and a small portion of 341 Spurwink Avenue, which is map R05, lot 29. We have the maps attached to, to the agenda packet for this evening. Uh, Mr. Stroud is asking, uh, currently, it's a large rectangular uh, shaped overlay district that we have for, for towers up there, and Mr. Stroud is asking to have the size of the overlay reduced to the smaller size that he have. Uh, Justin's here this evening to, to kind of describe what his plans are. He provided us a fairly exhaustive package, as you can see, uh, relating to, to the zoning change, and, uh, but he's here tonight to answer any questions and uh, describe what he's looking to do, if, if so needed. All right. Thank you, and should, could you give us your, our, your name and your address, please? I'm Justin Strout, and uh, I actually don't live in Cape Elizabeth, live in Portland, 42 Huntington Ave. I'm representing the Strout Trusts and Tower Specialists, and what we're trying to do is, is kind of tighten up the uh, Tower Overlay District. My grandfather, or my grandparents, lived in, in, on the property for years, and we were, I think, the first tower overlay district that the town created because the towers had always been there since the 50s. So at the time, I don't think anybody understood that you could make it smaller than the property size. And um, when 19 Wells Road was rezoned to allow a tower overlay district, they just made a small portion. So that's what we'd like to do is we'd like to have it just be a small portion that's necessary for the, for the actual towers and, and site equipment. So that's what we're trying to accomplish and I think the packet is pretty self-explanatory. It shows the detail of where we're trying to go uh, and I mean I could talk for a lot longer but I think it'd be better if you guys want to ask questions mm -hmm. and I try to answer them. Well, uh, the recommendation uh, is that the council refer this request to the planning board uh, <clears throat> for review and uh, I, I certainly support that. This is a rather technical situation. It is um, our usual practice to refer to the planning board at this stage of, of this kind of request. So, first of all, could I have a motion? Or, oh, I'm sorry, is any, would anyone have any questions for Mr. Straub? Councilor Straub? If it's appropriate at this time, I'm just, um, I'm curious what the, 
why would you ever shrink a district that gives you a benefit? I, I, don't, under, I don't understand what's going on, basically, I, to be blunt. Uh, I understand we're shrinking. I don't understand why. Yep, Mr. Straw. That's a good question. Um, basically, the property consists of about 25 acres of land, and the trust, there's, there's a Herbert Dort, there's Herbert and Dort Trust, so they own them. Um, at some point, the parcels are going to get broken up, and we don't know how that's going. I'm not handling that. I only deal with the towers. So when they do that, we thought it would be better to not have tower overlay if we're selling house lots. Plus, the only portion of like that circle, I don't want to call it a circle because it's not, but that shape is the only place that you can put a tower of 180 feet and still meet all the, the um, setback requirements. Anything other than that would be way down in elevation and would not be a good location for a tower anyways. So that's why we wanted to tighten it up. Had, had we really known this when we originally changed to a tower overlay, we would have done that. And then, because this might be another question, the reason that there's a little portion of lot three, or the 341 is because my uncle owned that property and when he went to sell it, his septic tank was on my grandparents' property and there was some other driveway issues. So they, they cut out a piece and we never really anticipated that the overlay went with it. We kind of thought it went with the property. So I've spoken to the property owner and he understands what's going on and he was fine. You know, he, he actually a really good guy. It was kind of neat. I got a tour of my uncle's house and how he's re, you know, remodeled it and everything. So it was kind of neat. But he's, you know, he's aware of what I'm trying to do and he was fine with it. And if you know, because if you need something from him, I'm sure I can talk to him and get him to to speak to Matt or you know whatever needs to be done. But that's why we're trying to do it. It's it's more about I just see if you're trying to sell a house lot, and somebody says my house lot's in tower overlay, you know, it didn't seem like a good thing to do. So um, now that we've seen the 19 Wells Road property with just a small portion uh, rezoned, I think it makes sense. You know, so we're not asking to. We're not asking to take away prime tower property is the way I look at it. The only place that you can actually build a tower on the hill is where we've done it. And we do have room if we needed to build a third tower later on, we can actually add another tower in there. And uh, I'm not currently pulling towers down. I was actually, it took a 150 foot tower down today. So we're actually trying to minimize the, the footprint of everything, so. Right, thank you. Are there any more questions for Mr. Stroud? Okay. Is there is there a motion to refer the request to the planning board for review and recommendation? So moved. Councilor Caitlin Jordan, is there a second? Second. Councilor Randall. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's six zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 43, the Ottawa Road Combined Sewer Overflow Remediation. This is about funding for the completion of phase three. Again, we're going to keep our town manager and our public works director <laughs> busy on this one. Um, Matt, if you would start start off. Uh, I'd be happy to, Chairman Sullivan, thank you. Uh, Public Works Director Bob Malley has provided a detailed update relating to the Ottawa Road Combined Sewer uh, Overflow Remediation Phase 3 project. As you may remember, this is a combined project that we're doing with, uh, with South Portland and the Portland Water District to uh, take care of the illicit or remove the illicit connections that take place between uh, homes, say their septic system, may, or sorry, their sump pump may be pump going into the sewer. And uh, long story short, that's a problem. And uh, this is the next phase in that, in that plan. Uh, but what we have found, we've gone out to bid twice on this project and have found that uh, the original estimated amount that was forecast to pay for the project was less than what we anticipated it was going to cost now that we have live bids. Uh, so we, we did have a bid opening, was that two weeks ago? Or in, in the January, so time flies. Uh, but end of January we had the bid opening and we did have uh, uh, one bidder, Dearborn Construction, and they were our bidder the last time as well. They revised their bid somewhat, but, uh, but still we have found that, uh, and there were other, I'm oh, sorry, I need to back up a little bit, there were other funds that were expended additionally in the earlier phase 
Uh, so we were kind of behind behind the eight ball a little bit as far as the amount of funds that we had already for the project. So for that reason, and we do have a healthy fund balance in the in the sewer fund uh, that we're not going to be putting that in any in any harm with this recommendation or request. But uh, we do need to get the project completed, and Bob can give you some more of the technical details where I where I'm not as well versed on that. If you, if you'd so like. Before I ask uh, Bob Malley to come up, uh, I need to again ask if there are any citizens in the audience who would like to speak to this issue. All right, seeing none, Bob, would you come up and? Um, as Matt said, uh, you know, we are making good progress on our efforts with the CSO uh, reduction plan. Again, working with Portland Water and the City of South Portland. Uh, we're on schedule. We've uh, uh, all agreed to a plan in 2013 to do a five-year mitigation of what they call peak flows during a heavy participation precipitation event. And uh, we've done phase one and phase two, which was essentially installing the infrastructure that would enable these connections, uh, these illicit connections. And these were installing stubs or extending storm drain lines to properties that would uh, have their sump pump connections connected into. So right now, and we call them illicit connections, uh, you know, people innocently you know, put their sump pump uh, outlet pipe into the sanitary sewer. None of these were done you know, maliciously. It's just something that it does overwhelm the sanitary system during a peak event. And we're uh, under an agreement with the main DEP to reduce these flows. So this is the, the final phase of the project. And again, uh, we're uh, requesting additional funding to complete the project, which will get underway this spring, you know, assuming that you will approve the funds. Could you just uh, remind the council and the public here and at home um, our obligations with the Department of Environmental Protection, et cetera, for this entire project? Yeah, so we submitted a, a five-year CSO master plan again back in 2013 and agreed to make efforts to uh, reduce these peak flows. In order to do this, uh, we've done, we've, we've, you know, we've picked away at the low-hanging fruit. We've got roof leaders out of the system. We uh, did gauging and checking of lines, tightening up manholes, those types of things. But now we're at that final phase where we need to get the sump pumps out of the system. It's the most difficult phase. Uh, some of these are easy connections. Some were just a matter of uh, you know, closing up a trap in a basement. Others are a little bit more complicated. But uh, we always knew this would be the most difficult phase. Mm -hmm. uh, the easy part was getting the infrastructure in place. But uh, now we need to get these sump pumps out of the sanitary system. So the main DEP has given us an extension, but that extension really was granted to revise the master plan once we've accomplished the efforts that uh, we intend to do this year. And so this, this has to do with getting, getting these illicit uh, uh, connections into the sewer system rather than having these, uh, uh, this, this stuff go into our uh, Casco Bay. Well, what it does, it overwhelms the Ottawa Road pump station, mm -hmm. and uh, so what these connections need to go in our stormwater system mm -hmm. versus the tan sanitary system. Okay. Any questions for Bob? All right. Thank you. Chairman. Yes. Uh, one quick question. Uh, so we only had one bid both times. We did. But uh, I assume that's probably because of the current construction environment. And are you comfortable with the second bid, given that now two times around it's been way higher than we anticipated? That's, that's a good question. Uh, it's not, there's not a lot of production with these types of projects. It's not like a water main project where the contractor can mobilize and lay storm pipe, water main pipe. Uh, some of the homes, uh, they're estimating that they can probably do one or two homes per day maybe one per day, so they've got a crew on site. Uh, there's costs incurred with the crews. We actually reached out, as I s stated in the memo to Matt, that we reached out to the contractor and said, what was your reasoning and how did you develop your bid? And there's subcontractors that are involved, electrical contractors, plumbing contractors. There's not a lot of glory with the bid. So uh, we did have some interest at the pre-bid meeting. Uh, the first time around, we had six or seven people come. But I think when they looked at the, maybe the lack of the production, we call it, with the project, it probably scared some people away. But Dearborn's been a, a good uh, contractor for us. Again, they completed the recycling center upgrade project. They did phase one of Hillway and Scott Dyer. So uh, we're comfortable with, uh, with the work that they've done. But 
It would have been nice to get two or three more uh, bidders. We actually reached out to people, reached out to smaller contractors, and encouraging them to take an interest in the bid, but uh, they were the only takers. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Bob. So is there a motion to uh, approve the recommendation of the town manager to appropriate $290,000 from the sewer fund to complete this project? Councilor Lennon? Uh, I move we approve the recommendation uh, to appropriate $290,000 from the sewer fund to complete this project. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item 44, Conservation Committee recommendation uh, concerning a town-owned lot, map U03, lot 092. And before I open this up, is there anyone from the audience who would like to speak to this item? All right, seeing no one, I will again ask uh, the town manager to uh, describe this item. and. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting to note that the Conservation Committee has recommended that the town owned lot not be sold. So if the town manager could uh, talk about this. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. I'd be happy to. Uh, as you recall, uh, back in January, we received an offer from, uh, from Mark Gresham and Sandra Elliott uh, to purchase the abutting lot uh, next to their house on Ocean View Road for $35,000. That was referred to the Conservation Committee and they reviewed it and came back with their recommendation uh, to, uh, it was kind of an interesting recommendation if you had the chance to read it, uh, that they recommended not to sell it and preserve it for open space. However, if you were going to sell it, to sell it with an easement on it or find a way to maintain the fact that the public could still get access across that parcel. Uh, they also noted within their, within their memo back to council that uh, the, they felt that the value offered was too low. And, uh, and they took, for case in point, as an example, the uh, piece of land that was purchased uh, not too far, not too long ago for $70,000 that abutted the Lovett Heirs parcel and didn't have road frontage. Uh, so the council did that last uh, a year, almost a year and a half ago. An interesting, uh, I guess you could call it a, an epilogue to this story, is that I spoke with Mr. Gresham on Friday of last week and had let him know about what the Conservation Committee's recommendations were. And uh, he has since followed up with, a re with an email to me uh, to offer $90,000 uh, for the site. And he would also, would, is completely in favor of having an easement across it. He would he'd be happy to meet all of, the, uh, all of the desires of the Conservation Committee. Uh, their, their largest plan, quite frankly, isn't to build a house on that. They, they would like to have it, A, to have certainty next to their property, but B, they'd also like to expand their home and they need to expand it up to their existing property line and they would use the extra 20 feet as a, for their setback. So their proposal would be to merge that all. So I guess my recommendation now would be a bit uh, bifurcated, would be one, to accept the recommendation of the Conservation Committee, but two, would be to uh, uh, come back next, you know, I can uh, come back next month with another action item for you to refer back to the Conservation Committee. I did have the opportunity to speak with Maureen O'Mara, the planner, about this. She also staffs the Conservation Committee, and she felt that they, they would probably look at that fairly uh, uh, positively uh, for what it's worth. Councilor Lennon? Um, <clears throat> I'm curious why we have to send this back again and come back to us. Are we because they've said here that they also think, they're also okay with our agreeing to sell it if we preserve this easement. And I, li I really like their idea of putting the money in the land acquisition fund, yep. particularly how, how low that's gotten. This seems like a great way to get that going again. Um, so my question is, is that 90,000 something we can take to the bank when we vote tonight, or is that why you're pausing? If, if I may, Chairman Sullivan, yes. uh, maybe the uh, maybe good to have uh, direct the manager to have further conversations with Mr. Gresham to perhaps uh, 
execute a purchase and sale agreement and spell those out and have that back for you for next month for action. Uh, and you can take a look at, you know, with those different recommendations in, involved, such as you know, combining the lots into one, having easement language down the side, uh, you know, on the side that the conservation committee would like to have, and then try to get those finer details filled in. Uh, I think that may be a good good approach as well. So just yep. to follow up, it, does that mean that we we wouldn't take an official vote tonight? We'd sort of say, okay, good idea, Matt, do it, or do we need to vote to send it? I think What's you'd want, the procedural? I think you'd want to vote to direct me to mm -hmm. to come back with a, a, an executable document for next month. Let me make that motion. Well, may I may I add something to that, and um, that you that you have an, a purchase and sale agreement, that also the town attorney has reviewed it with the easement language or whatever else the town would like to to have along with that. If, if I may, yep. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make sure that we get the, the proper legal uh, documentation taken care of. I, I I'm I'm an, I'm an appraiser, not a broker, <laughs> by by trade. So I'll make sure that we get. You know, we have our ducks in a row, quite frankly, when it comes to, to that closing. So if we can engage okay. the town's attorney. So, Councilor Leonard, would you like to, do you feel that you can make that motion? Uh, um, I, I, I can muddle through it. I, I, yeah. I move that the council authorize the town manager to take this issue back to um, the, 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 back the to, buyer. To the buyer, yeah. to the pr proposed or interested buyer and the Conservation Commission committee and the planner to hammer out the details so that next month, maybe for next month's meeting, so we have something pretty specific to vote on. One further point, if I may, yes. Chairman Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Gresham is also a, a ship's captain uh, who is, uh, he's currently on a ship. So he has the opportunity to converse by email and, okay. and phone when, when, when he's in, in That's port. That's part of so, my motion. Uh, so I can, you know, it, it may be within the next uh, next two meetings, but uh, but I know that you know, obviously there's not a great hue and cry from the land to purchase this piece of land, but I, I know they are very, they're, they're passionate about it, they like to have it. So it's just a question of maybe physically having him available to, to do some of that as well. I but I can I will follow up with him by phone as well as email as well to let him know about we'll move the process forward if the council so so votes. Okay, is there a second? Councilor Caitlin Jordan, any more discussion? Council Straw? Uh, I'm just curious, I don't know the answer to this. Uh, our real estate acquisition disposition policy, uh, can we just enter into negotiations and a contract with one party or does it have to go out to bid? If, if I may, yeah. uh, it, this had gone out originally uh, years ago, and these, ah. it's, this, it's been the same party that's shown interest uh, at all times. Uh, so I feel there's some some Understood. flexibility involved there. In, in the contemplated transaction, um, it would be structured to ensure there's merger of the two lots. All right. Yeah, yeah we would have to do a, a full meets and bounds uh, yep. description to get that. And I think that's the best way to go. And the assessors worked on that some as well. Uh, and the code officer would need that in order to try to give them the ability to flex with their uh, their setback issue that they're going to have too. All right. Any more questions? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 45, draft mission vision statement for the for Fort Williams Park. Uh, a goal of the town council for 2018 is to work with the Fort Williams Park committee to review the mission, vision, and financial sustainability of Fort Williams Park. Uh, before we continue on this item, is there anyone from the audience that would like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one. Um, we'll proceed. Uh, we did have a workshop with the Fort Williams Park committee on February 5th, um, and on March 5th, the town council drafted the following mission vision statement, which I will read. The town's vision for Fort Williams Park is to provide a safe, high quality space for Cape Elizabeth citizens and visitors to enjoy. We will protect and maintain access to the park's historic elements and natural beauty for this and all future generations and optimize the town's stewardship by managing the park through financially and ecologically sustainable practices. 
Uh, it's recommended the town council review the draft mission vision statement for Fort Williams tonight. We may adopt it, edit it, uh, refer to a workshop or other review. So. Well, let me, we, we're all familiar with this, so why don't I go ahead and call for a motion now so we can begin uh, council discussion. Is there a motion to adopt the draft mission vision statement for Fort Williams Park? I'll Councilor Penny Jordan? I'll move that we uh, adopt the mission statement that's been put forward here tonight for Fort Williams Park. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Councilor Valerie Randall? Any discussion? Any further discussion on it? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 46. We have a draft report from the Paper Streets Public Workshops prepared by group, Good Group Decisions. It is recommended that we acknowledge receipt of this draft report prepared by Good Group Decisions relating to the February 1 and 3, 2000 Paper Street Streets Public Workshops. Councilor Straw. Uh, so uh, as I did in the last two workshops, I'm unilaterally recusing myself for the time being until we're done revising the Code of Ethics. All right, thank you. And before we proceed, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this issue before we begin? Would you please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. I am Jim Moore, 5 Wombeck Road. I summarize the attendance of the Good Group Decisions Public Workshops. Without repeat attendees, 55 residents want Surfside Avenue and Atlantic Place Paper Streets accepted. Five residents want them extended and nine residents want them vacated. In summary, 80% of the good group decisions public workshop participants want the town to accept Surfside Avenue and Atlantic Place Paper Streets. This provides more data, along with town council letters, public comments, and a related petition that shows the majority of Cape Elizabeth residents want the town to accept Surfside Avenue and Atlantic Place paper streets. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jody Burrow, and I live at 5 Wombeck Road 2. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Save Our Shoreline Access Coalition members, I wish to thank the town leadership for providing an opportunity to participate in the Good Group Decisions Public Forum. I'd also like to report that 1,220 petition signatures have been submitted from Cape citizens. These citizens from all over Cape are in favor of accepting the paper streets at issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Okay, let me just. Is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the draft report by good group decisions relating to February 1 and 3, uh, 2013, I'm sorry, 2018 Paper Streets Public Workshop? Councilor Lennon? Uh, I move that we acknowledge the receipt of the draft report prepared by Good Group Decisions relating to the February 1 and 3 Paper Streets Public Workshop with thanks to Good Group Decision. Is there a second? Second. Oh, Councilor Randall, is there any more discussion? No. All those in favor? It's 6 to 0. Thank you. Moving on to the next item, item number 47, funding request from the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for the purchase of Robinson Woods 3. Um, before I proceed with this, is there anyone from the audience who would like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, I'll continue. Uh, we will we'll discuss this, but it is in order, as stated on our agenda, for the Town Council to refer this request of the Land Trust 
to the Conservation Committee for review and recommendation. Uh, I would ask the town manager, is there anything you'd like to add to this before I call for a motion? The only, uh, thank you, Chairman Sullivan. The only thing I can add to this is I know that the uh, land trust is, uh, is was scheduled to meet with the Conservation Committee tomorrow night, so this would be uh, in line with uh, <laughs> loading their agenda so for what it's worth. But I, uh, it, they may be put off for a little bit of time due to uh, unforeseen weather circumstances, but uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's the only thing I have to add to that. So thank you. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to refer this request of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for funding of Robinson Woods III to the Conservation Committee for review and recommendation. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Rendell. Is there a second? I'll second that. Councilor Penny Jordan, is there any discussion? Councilor Straw? I was, uh, I was hoping you could give me some information as this is the first one uh, that I've participated in. Do we have a list of properties that we have prioritized for preservation? Is that something that the Conservation Committee normally would look at as part of this process? Yes, it is. All right, great. Thank you. Any, anyone else? No, any more discussion? Okay. All those, uh, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 48, recommendation of the Appointments Committee vacancies, the Fort Williams Park Committee and Planning Board. I would like to uh, ask the chairman of the appointments committee to open this item. Thank you. Um, I want to start by thanking all the folks who applied again. Um, it's so great when people step up and want to volunteer. And I would say, if you weren't chosen this time, please don't give up, because it's not uncommon at all for people to come back again, and sometimes even back for a third time. Um, so with that, um, it gives me great pleasure to recommend uh, the two people that we chose uh, both unanimously on the committee. The first is Kenneth Pierce from 35 Oakhurst Road um, to serve on the Fort Williams Park Committee. And the second, Andrew Gilbert from 32 Astor Lane to serve on the planning board. Uh, so I guess, do you want a motion for me? Would you, yeah. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> but that was an introduction. Um, I move that we um, appoint um, Kenneth Pierce uh, to the Fort Williams Park Committee and Andrew Gilbert to the Planning Board. Is there a second? Councilor Garvin? Any discussion? Hmm? I'd just like to say that again to thank people for stepping up to volunteer for the town. We're always so appreciative and always amazed by the incredible depth of, of uh, experience and that we have by, you know, in our citizens. So thank you all for doing this. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 49, an update of the uh, Springwink School building. Before we proceed with this item, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this? Yes, please come forward. Your name and address, please. My name is Jim Rowe, and I live at 127 Oakhurst Road. And uh, a couple years ago, I missed a meeting, and that's how you get elected president of the Cape Elizabeth Historical Preservation Society. Um, we've followed this, uh, this issue very closely. We have a, a strong desire to, to uh, become an occupant at the former Spurwink School. Uh, I personally have attended all the meetings of the committee to date. It's been a very thorough process, although prolonged somewhat. I was. Uh, Speaking on behalf of the society, I'm, I'm thrilled to see this memo that uh, the committee chairman uh, Garvin passed out tonight because it means the ball is moving forward apparently. Um, I, I just can't express enough uh, the gratitude that we feel to the town for providing us with space. We're currently operating out of the, uh, the public safety building in the town center. Uh, it's a great space in many respects, but it's not big enough. Uh, history is a cumulative thing. Uh, we don't get rid of stuff as, as quickly as we bring in stuff, and so we, we need more room. The Sperling School seems like a natural fit, uh, and I'll leave it at that for now, but thank you very much, and I appreciate the, the effort of the committee. Thank you. Any, anyone else? No, so moving on, I would like to turn this over to Councilor Garvin to proceed and tell us about his memo, which we all got this afternoon. Yep. Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. I'm not gonna go through this line by line, um, but I did distribute a memo to you all this afternoon uh, and handed out copies here tonight. Um, you know, as um, Jim just mentioned, uh, 
this has been a, an, an unfortunately uh, drawn out process, uh, which I'll bear some personal responsibility for. Um, but effectively at this point, we really just need to, um, you know, formally wrap up the process to get this across the finish line and back to the council for consideration. Um, we've reached pretty much a general consensus um, at the level of the committee that it makes sense um, for a number of different reasons. Um, which I won't bother to enumerate here tonight, but um, that it makes sense for a number of different reasons uh, for the Historical Preservation Society to be located there. That doesn't negate the fact that there remain, I think, some uh, important questions to be answered around uh, cost and improvements and necessary repairs and renovations and fit out for the building. Um, you know, I think, as a by way of a heads up, Matt, I think yeah. largely the committee is going to task you and, and Perry with um, working with the uh, Historical Preservation Society, if that's the will of the council, um, to sort of iron out those details. So um, anyway, for the benefit of the two newer counselors, I did include a little bit of a background here just so that you had some context for um, how this all got going. Um, and I've outlined what I would recommend as next steps, um, like I said, to bring this process to a close. Um, the first of which is potentially us voting tonight on a further short-term extension. Um, and then uh, I would recommend that we schedule a meeting of the committee for the week of the 26th of March with the intention of um, uh, returning to the council for its review and potential action, our report at the April 9th meeting. Uh, the one last thing I'll point out too is in the process and one of the things that slowed this down was the um, uh, the change in um, the director position at the Facilities and Transportation Department. And um, Council Sullivan pointed out to me that um, we may have a few small gaps in um, sort of our meeting documentation relative to agenda and approved minutes, which will make sure that to the best of our ability, we can go back and make sure that they're all accurate, complete, and available and accessible. Um, there may be one within that I'll mention that because the former transportation and facilities director is no longer here that we might not have the ability to recreate. But um, other than that, we'll make sure that all of the, all of the housekeeping is, order, is in order there. So that's my update. Great. Thank you. Um, I wonder if uh, I see the very first step is, it, is approving an extension, a deadline extension. So you mentioned coming, being ready to come back at the April 9th meeting, so potentially, but uh, Council Kaylin Jordan, you're messaging me. I would suggest two months just in case scheduling, because that's why the Harbor Committee is going to ask for an extension <laughs> on the next item, because scheduling meetings, we just couldn't sure. get the meetings scheduled. Well, I, I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, I'm, it, it seems that you will likely come back to us by April 9th, but it might be wise to, to have a 60-day extension from tonight with weather and what else? Uh, I, I, I specifically didn't suggest the amount of time for the extension, <laughs> but more was focused on the actual yep. dates to get nope. things done. So That's fine. whatever, it, I, I have no opinion. On. I, I see that as the first step, though, because the council would need to vote to approve an extension. A deadline extension. So I, I think that that would would be our first motion, and and I, you know, I would see that as happening. And then once the the we receive the officially received the uh, committee's uh, voted on approved recommendations, then at that point we would likely entertain. I would suspect a workshop um, or something like. You know, certainly, you know, we we'd have it on the agenda item, but I imagine we would be. Uh, setting up a workshop to review the recommendations because, uh, you know, there the cer certainly were various parties interested. This is uh, a very, uh, while not on the National Historic Register, it is a very, it is certainly a very sentimental building in Cape Elizabeth. And uh, uh, it, if, we, if we keep this, it needs to be occupied. But I remember well the, uh, the, uh, anecdotal estimates of what it's going to cost to, to put this building to rights. So that, I'm sure, is probably going to be a workshop discussion in the near future. But at any rate, um, 
Would you like to make a motion? Sure. To uh, request a deadline extension in 30 or 60 days. I, I certainly wouldn't want to go more than 60, but I'm happy for 30 or 60. I'll move that we uh, grant an extension to the Spurwing School Reuse Committee uh, for 60 days from tonight's meeting. Is there a second? Council Straw? Any more discussion? And I certainly would love to be able to hear from you that you're ready for the April 9 Town Council meeting. So I'll keep my fingers crossed and be looking for that, that email. So anyway, any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 50, <clears throat> Recycling Committee, 2018 Goals and Objectives. Before I open this, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one. Uh, it's recommended that the Town Council acknowledge receipt of the Recycling Committee's 2018 Goals and Objectives. Would the Town Manager like to say anything about this item? If I may, mm -hmm. Chairman Sullivan, thank you. Uh, the one item, uh, first a gold star to the Recycling Committee for, for meeting the Council's desire to get, uh, to get their report on their goals and objectives back uh, within, by the end of March, so they're ahead of schedule. I did remind all the department heads today, for those who staff any boards and committees, to please uh, remind them. Uh, we may find a couple of challenges because weather's been a bit of a, of a bugger, but uh, if, they, if they don't get them this month, we will have them by the, by the end of April or by the April meeting at the latest, so. Uh, but we should have majority of them for, for next month's council meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to, did I, did I ask for that already? I can't remember. Is there a motion to uh, acknowledge receipt of the Recycling Committee's 2018 Goals and Objectives? Councilor Garvin? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any further discussion? All, Councilor Lennon. So I just wanted to thank them again. I, I'm so excited about this committee. They're so energetic and I love that they're not only working hard, but thinking up initiatives and following through. And I think the focus on the schools and really education for the kids and getting the recycling and um, the whole waste stream there up, up to uh, as best as it can be is, is I fully applaud it. So I just want to thank the recycling committee again. Anyone else? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 51, request of the Harbors Committee to extend the deadline. And before I turn this over, uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, we'll proceed. Um, on December 10th, 2017, the council approved the request of the Harbors Committee for a three-month extension until March 31, 2018, in order for the committee to complete its work. The committee is requesting an additional one month extension. I know we have a councilor who serves on that committee. Um, Councilor Kate and Jordan, would you like to um, open up this item? Oh, sure. Um, the only reason we need an extension, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, committee members scheduling. We can't, we have the need for two more meetings. We figure and we couldn't schedule that first one of two until the end of March. So with people going away and schedules, we just couldn't make it happen. All right, thank you. And also I'd like the town manager to address the funding request uh, related to this item. The uh, Harbors Committee uh, would like uh, an additional $2,500 to cover additional expenses. Could you please uh, talk to that item? Speak to that item. Yes, and if I may through the chair. Yep. Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. Uh, after speaking with Steve Harding, who's the staff support for the committee, he's doing a, a, a great job, but uh, as, the, as the project grows and, and grows in scope, uh, he's finding that the hours that he has allocated for it and the amount of funding that we have allocated to compensate for those hours uh, don't match up. And, but he feels that this additional amount should bring the report through its uh, successful completion uh, and, and should get us to get us to that point. I think originally the original estimate was a bit of a, uh, a rough estimate to get there. And uh, I will say, having been at least to at least four different Harbors Committee meetings, they are doing an incredible job. And this is going to be a great report. And they've been doing a lot of work on this. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing it. I don't think they've left a stone unturned. Uh, watching their discussion, it's been very thorough. And uh, I think this will be a great report. But 
but to get there, we quite frankly need to compensate the uh, external uh, staff we have hired for it. And that's why I made the recommendation. Uh, is there a motion to approve the request of the Harbors Committee to extend the deadline until April 30, 2018 in order for the committee to complete its work and uh, to recommend, I'm sorry, to approve the recommendation of the town manager to transfer $2,500 from the undesignated fund balance to account number 0715-5313, the Harper's Committee, to cover the additional expenses of the extended deadline. So moved. Okay, Councilor Caitlin Jordan, moved. Is there a second? second. Councilor Penny Jordan, is there any comment? Questions or concerns, Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Only that we can't do it without Steve. Yeah. So. And he's currently uh, having some. He's having he's surgery. Out for me. He's having surgery, so. That was he's, the he's laid up for the, for the next 10 days at least, I think. But right. he should be good after that. So Councillor Straw? Instead of April, should we have May? Is that what you're saying? No, that was the, uh, the oh, scheduling. Oh, got it. I wasn't going to bring that part up, but that was part of the scheduling. Problem. We had request. a yeah. oh, surgery and then a vacation from somebody else, and they don't line up at the same time, of course. Any other comments? I mean, I, I would just speak to the amount. Um, we have, how much have we appro appropriated already for this report? By the, about 17.5 by the end of the report. $17,500, and so this is an additional. 2,500 bringing it to? No, uh, total, with this 25, it'll be 17. 17, five. okay. Yeah, there was initially 10, and then there was 5,000 extension, and then there was 2,500. Okay. Uh, I know that there are some technical elements to this. Um, Steve Harding is an engineer. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not happy about spending more tax dollars, but at this point, I you know, I, I feel comfortable going with the town manager's recommendation. Does anyone else have any thoughts? No? Okay, all those in favor? It's unanimous. And our last item for the evening uh, is item number 52, an executive session, discussion of collective bargaining, bargaining agreements and an annual evaluation of the town manager. Um, is there a motion to enter into executive session? And uh, when I ask for the motion, whoever wants to make the motion, just as a reminder, has to read this uh, motion in its entirety. That is state law. Is there a motion, Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Uh, that capable is the town council enter into executive session in conformance with MRSA section 405 subsection 6A to begin the annual evaluation of the town manager and one MS MRSA section 4056D to receive direction relating to the collective bargaining agreements with the Cape Elizabeth Bovillant, Bovillant Association and Teamsters Union local number 340. Is there a second? Oh. Councillor Garvin, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, it's unanimous, and so it is 8, 16 p.m., so the council will retire to the Jordan Conference Room to go into, uh, to begin its executive session.